Welcome to worship on this 12th Sunday after Trinity, 30th September. A very, very warm welcome to you. My name is David Trahan and I'm the vicar of the parish of Tiddenham and priest in charge of the parishes of St. Bravels with Hughesfield and Brockwear. And you join us on this Sunday as our theme is called to be authentic. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. and strength, a very present help in times of trouble.
Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We now have our Bible readings. Today's reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Chapters 12, verses 9 to 18. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Bible reading is from Luke 6, verses 43 to 45. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person, out of the good treasure of the heart, produces good, and the evil person, out of evil treasure, produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Lord, may we live life together in the flow of your love. Amen. Called to be authentic. In our first reading today, St Paul is telling us to live and love in a way that is pure and genuine and authentic and sincere. Love must be genuine, love must be sincere, and so on. Romans 12, verse 9 onwards. The Greek word translated sincere in the NIV is the word anupokritos. I'm not exactly a Greek scholar. Anupokritos. And the last part of the word is our word hypocrite. The prefix an means without. So the Greek word actually means without hypocrisy. In classical Greek, the word hypocrite meant someone who wore a mask in a play. So in other words, Paul says the true believer should live and love without a mask. A very relevant image for us today. However, this isn't a prophecy giving us a get out clause from COVID measures, but an exhortation that the Christian life of love should be real and not one of pretense. It shouldn't be hypocritical. However, it should be sincere, genuine, the real deal, authentic. You may have read that Jesus was not a fan of hypocrisy either. Indeed, in looking for a gospel reading today, there are plenty of passages to choose from that denounce outward religious show and exhort sincere and genuine faith, authentic faith. Jesus' lambasting of the religious leaders time and again is quite astonishing and very sobering, especially as one called to be a leader. Just take a look at Matthew chapter 23. I couldn't quite bring myself to choose it for today. And Jesus isn't the only one who takes a dislike to hypocritical life and faith. It's a big issue for people today 
when it comes to church life, that as Christians our words don't always match up to our deeds. People don't know quite what they're going to get from us. On the other hand, people notice and respond attentively to those who sincerely and authentically live out their faith. Authenticity for millennials, people in their 20s and 30s, is meant to be particularly important these days. Authenticity can be said to be the relationship between what we are inwardly and how we act and appear outwardly. Authenticity is when these two things are in agreement. When the inward and outward don't agree, we enter the realm of hypocrisy, insincerity, falseness and feigning. Of course, all of us at one time or another enter the territory of trying to appear differently to others than what we really are inside. That's why many of us related so well to that comedy uh, years ago called Keeping Up Appearances. I'm sure some of you remember it, old Hyacinth Bouquet. We try to appear confident when we're afraid, poised when we are dazed and uncertain, peaceful when we're anxious, happy when we're fuming, you know, and like gritted through the teeth, interested when we are bored, healthy when we are sick, intelligent when we haven't got a clue, concerned when we are apathetic, and devout when we are not in a great place spiritually. Although we do this, the fact is, deep down, we don't really like doing it. There isn't really any sense of peace and fulfilment for us when we've successfully deluded people about who we really are or what we really feel or think. Unless, of course, one is utterly enslaved to self-deception, we all long for integrity between the inner and outer person. Indeed, I think that despite our pretense, there is a deep and I believe God-given longing to be authentic, to be seen for who we are and not to be wearing masks, not to be hypocrites. It is stressful and exhausting when our energies are devoted to appearing rather than being. Deep down we all know the calling to be authentic.
one of the joys of the end of lockdown has been the resumption of weddings and I've already had the privilege of doing four recently. I think that pretty much every couple I've ever dealt with has expressed how they want their marital relationship to be marked by authentic love. And that desire for authenticity in love, of course, is certainly not limited to marriage. I would have thought that all of us want genuine, authentic love and friendship in our relationships. Authentic, real love is open, transparent, sincere and genuine. False love is closed, wears masks, metaphorically speaking, pretends, keeps a record of wrongs, tries to control and manipulate the other, needs to be right at all costs. And false love looks merely to satisfy the self, which dents trust and intimacy. True love, on the other hand, can handle weakness and failure, sickness and poverty, wrinkly skin, questionable fashion sense, I'm not saying anything, smelly socks and the most curious of habits. True love may not necessarily be successful in the eyes of the world, but it never fails and never ends. False love is temporary and fades away. True love, authentic love, is faithful, utterly fulfilling and eternal. And God, of course, is love, true, holy and perfect love. Despite all that religious folks might otherwise convey at times, and the love we see modelled in the person of Jesus is sincere, genuine and authentic, particularly if we look at the crib and the cross, where the authentic love of God is revealed in the utmost vulnerability. There's no pretense whatsoever. All is revealed for what it is. And here is a vital point. It is through God in Christ that our longing for authenticity is found and satisfied. He not only gives the freedom to be outwardly what we are inwardly, but he also, more importantly, enables us to be inwardly who we were designed to be. Jesus enables us to remove the mask of pretense and mask wearing that we've, and falsehood that we've put up to the world. In turning to him in humility and brokenness and honesty and trusting him as Saviour and Lord, we can become inwardly and outwardly what God created us to be. There's tremendous freedom, joy and fulfilment when we can be our true selves, where in vulnerability the brokenness of the old self still hangs about and can be seen, our imperfections are exposed, but also God's grace and goodness is shown and the work of newness of life he is doing in us is revealed to others. So how might we be authentic in our lives? Well, here's a somewhat unsophisticated, though not easy, three-step start. One, be vulnerable. Don't be afraid of being appropriately vulnerable. The Bible encourages us to confess our sins to one another and acknowledge the ways in which we are still broken. Honesty with ourselves, with God and with others is the first part of conversion. And awareness, that word awareness, awareness of what is going on inwardly and outwardly in any self-deception and incongruence is recognised. Prayerfulness before God and non-judgmental companionship and fellowship are really important. So be vulnerable. Secondly, embrace the cross with the awareness of your vulnerability and your brokenness. Walk with Jesus to the cross and stay there a while. Take some time. This is a hard and uncomfortable and painful place to go because this is where God can be allowed to do his thing in our lives. Crucifying the old self in and with Christ, we can then know his power to save and redeem. And thirdly, live in and for Christ by the Spirit. After you've been vulnerable and have stayed at the cross, we allow Jesus to redefine us, renew us, reshape us. We let go of what has been 
and surrender what is burdensome and unholy and walk in and embrace the new life in Christ through the Spirit of God, filling our hearts and lives and making us more and more the people he has created us to be, more and more like Jesus. This is just a suggested path of how we can be authentic. It's a process that can't be rushed, it can't be forced, and it can't be hypocritical. Be vulnerable, embrace the cross, and live in and for Christ by the Spirit. And finally, when God does an authentic work in us and we begin to be the people who live and love genuinely, sincerely, with less and less hypocrisy, what happens? Well, we might start to display the Beatitudes that Jesus describes in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5. We might think with a transformed mind, a new way of thinking, express and live out genuine love as described in Romans 12. We might start to love in a way that overflows in our actions and can be seen by others in a powerful way, like in 1 Corinthians 13. The fruit of the Spirit may follow from Galatians 5. Our attitude will become more like Jesus, with the virtue of humility appearing. We might start to shine like stars in dark places, as it says in Philippians 2. Prayerfulness without ceasing and thankfulness in all things start to occur, as it says in 1 Thessalonians 5. And our self-control, especially in terms of our speech, can change. See James chapter 3. In living the authentic Christian life, will bring glory to God and be great friends and companions with each other on the journey. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation groaning? a new creation coming it is. is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst it is. is it good that we remind ourselves of this it is
Is he worthy? Is he worthy of it? Is he worthy? We learn to love with sincerity and genuineness. Lord, work in me, work in us. Let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you, your homes and those you love, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.